What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'm going to give you some beginner tips for anyone kind of starting out in 2021 within the Elder Scrolls Online. These are things that I learned along the way since I've played uh, some things that should help you out. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. The first thing is make sure you, once you start a new character, you kind of go through the tutorial, you're going to be given three skill points. Make sure that you add one of those points to each tree. You'll have three you know, abilities available to unlock. Unlock all three abilities because that's going to allow you to start leveling up all three of those kind of skill lines from those three abilities. Some people will say, you know, I only like this one skill. I see another skill in this particular tree that I like, so I'm just going to save my points. Don't worry. You're going to unlock plenty of skill points uh, to unlock this stuff. So make sure that you have, you know, each point allotted to all three skills that you have available. That way you can start leveling up each individual skill tree. The next thing is don't worry about kind of your character's ability points you know what you have unlocked you know what you're unlocking you know how much health stamina or magic you know what you're kind of putting those points into because once you get closer to level 50 you will be rewarded some free respect scrolls that will allow you to respect all this stuff for free and even after you use those free respect scrolls you can always go respect a lot of these things in game for gold uh, in certain towns so you can mess around with this you can experiment with this you can play around with it until you learn the game because you can respect these things, like I said, for free once you get closer to 50. And then once you use your free scrolls, you can then go use gold to respect. Uh, the next tip that I could give you is make, make sure that you're using the buff food or drinks that you're getting for free with the rank up rewards. This was something Bethesda added several years ago. Uh, and I think the rank up kind of, you know, reward system is a great thing. Uh, you get a lot of different rewards uh, throughout you know, your leveling experience from zero to 50, and you're going to get a lot of different foods and drinks. Uh, the drinks are going to kind of look like a little goblet. The food's usually going to look like a, a whole turkey, a whole uh, a chicken, that kind of thing. You're going to use these because they're either going to give you, you know, max or a larger stats on your health, magic, and stamina, or the drinks are going to give you regen on your health, magic, and, uh, magic and stamina. So these are really good things to use while you're leveling up because they're going to make you, make it a little bit easier on you. You also kind of get an idea to understand how food and buff drinks work in game because the later on uh, you get into the game, the more you play, you get into the champion point kind of system, you start playing in game stuff. These things are very important. So make sure that you're using the, the ones that you have available for free to begin with. Make sure that you always have those equipped. I think everything they give you is going to last two hours in game. So it's not really, you know, something that you have to make sure that's, uh, you know, kept up with, you know, like every 10 or 15 minutes or something like that. But make sure you have those food drinks or, you know, those, those drink buffs or that food, you know, active anytime you're playing while you're leveling up in game. Upgrade your abilities and then kind of go ahead. And once you get to a certain point, uh, po a certain point, excuse me, you're going to see the option to morph your ability. A lot of people are going to go ahead and morph those abilities. What I would recommend doing is once you get to that point with an ability that you see, it says you can morph it now, unlock another ability. You can come back later on and, you know, decide what morph you want to use. Uh, Cause at that point that, that, that skill is kind of, you know, at its end point. Yes, you will still level up, you know, that, that morph that you pick. But in my opinion, it's better in the end to have, you know, once you get closer to 50 to have more skills available that all need to be morphed than just a few more skills available and a lot of skills that aren't unlocked, if that makes sense. So make sure once you get to the point where things need to be morphed, you just go pick another skill. And that way, once you decide how you want to build your characters, you have or your character, you have a lot of options there with different skills from all the different skill trees. Uh, make sure that you unlock the light, heavy and medium armor skill trees. This is very easy to do. You're going to notice in game when you unlock gear, when you find gear, that's going to have a either a weight of light, medium, or heavy. And how you unlock the skill trees for these is very, very simple. All you need to do is have three pieces of the same weight equipped at one time. So if you have a set of gear that you really like using, but you pick up, let's just say you have one piece of light on or everything else is medium and heavy. And you're like, well, I don't have the light skill tree unlocked yet. If you pick up some more light gear, just slap three pieces on real quickly. It'll unlock the skill line. Then you can kind of put back on what you want to use, but make sure you do that for all three weights. Like I said, light, medium, and heavy. Once you have that skill line unlocked, it will be able to rank up depending on what gear you're wearing. Um, make sure also that you set your, you know, your in-game settings to kind of what you like. Uh, the in-game settings that come out with, with the game, they're kind of default no matter what platform you play on, 
are not really that great. I made a console settings guide not long ago. I will link it in the top corner right now. I'm not going to go through all the settings in this video because it would make it extremely long. But you either can pause the video right now, check out those settings, or, you know, once you're done with this video, check out that settings guide. It will make life a lot easier uh, if you have the correct settings on, in my opinion. It makes the UI a lot easier to navigate. This makes the game a lot better just overall. So make sure that you have the right settings, you know, kind of set up within your game uh, to have the best experience possible. Uh, the game has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours uh, of content. So a lot of people, I think, buy the base game and then they hear about all this DLC and they're like, did I do the wrong thing? Should I have bought different editions? That kind of thing. If you just have the base game with no DLC, believe me, you have hundreds of hours of content to play. And almost, it kind of in my opinion, almost is, is the best just to have the base game to start out with because we'll get into it here in a little bit and some different tips that I'm going to give you of kind of why I, I feel that way. But the base game is, is the easiest, in my opinion, to kind of learn what's going on. Uh, it's not quite as difficult. There's not as much going on in the open world. Some of the starting worlds you start in, depending on, uh, you know, kind of what kind of character you've made, you know, what uh, faction that you're in, uh, you're going to start start in worlds that are a little bit easier. There's not going to be a lot of things in the open world that can really just destroy you, like some of these newer, uh, some of the newer DLC worlds. So if you just have the base game, don't worry. Uh, learn the game, see if you enjoy it, and then later on you can upgrade and buy different DLCs and that kind of thing. Uh, learn how to heavy attack, light attack, block, roll dodge, all those things are your friend. Of course, you can notice if you hold down, you know, depending on if you're on console or, you know, PC, mouse, and keyboard, if you hold down your attack button, you're going to do a heavy attack. If you tap it, you're going to do a light attack. Uh, of course, you can block. On console, blocking is the left trigger. Attacking, of course, is the right trigger. Um, if you want to roll dodge, it's the, you know, the block and jump. There's a lot of different ways to kind of navigate combat. It's not just sitting there doing attacks over and over. You're going to, you know, you're going to die if you do that. You're going to have, something's going to hit you. Something's going to throw out an AOE and kill you. So make sure that you know how to light attack, heavy attack, uh, roll dodge, block. Because later on, the more you advance, you start getting into builds. You start watching YouTube videos or, or Twitch streams, whatever the case may be, trying to figure out what kind of build you want. You're going to hear a lot of people talking about light attacks, uh, weaving, heavy attack, uh, you know, block canceling, that kind of thing, roll dodging. And if you've already kind of learned these skills early on, uh, you'll kind of somewhat understand what they're talking about. And it'll be a little bit easier to uh, kind of advance through these more difficult styles of combat. Another thing that I think is probably really helpful is a lot of people want to know, you know, I made a certain race for this certain class and did I screw up? Uh, a lot of people ask that question. Now, I will say there are certain races for certain classes that are considered best in slot. That's going to do the best damage, the most damage you can do with that certain race or class. You know, there's certain particular races that work the best. But I will go ahead and tell you, you can use any race for any class and it will be successful. Will it be the absolute best? No. Will it get the job done? Yes. Just keep in mind, if you've made a class and you, later on you say, you know, I want to make, I'm going to use a, a you know, a tank, for example, or a, 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 let's go with a damage character because tank would be kind of uh, bad for me to say because you can use a, a pretty much any race with a tank and not really see much difference at all if you kind of understand the tanking role. So I'm going to use my class, for example. I have a magic sorcerer. A lot of people, like me, use a high elf because that's going to give you the max damage. Now, we have different updates and things that change up class classes and some class may be better at other times. But overall, you know, a high elf has kind of been always seen as one of the majority of the time, the better DPS role for a magic sorcerer. If you picked a, a Breton or you picked an Aragoni or something like that, does it mean that you're not going to be good with that class? No, it, it's still going to do its job. But just like I said, kind of for example, the high elf is going to be, you know, the most damage that you're going to get. You're going to be able to get the maximum potential out of it. You always can make another character if you like later on. You know, if you decided you decided you had one sorcerer and you want to make one that's, you know, kind of that max potential, you could go in and, you know, make it with that certain race. Or you can kind of just stick with what you got. You know, it's like I said, it's not going to be that big of a deal. So don't worry too much about, you know, exactly what race you picked. If you find out later on, it may not be best in slot. Be sure as you're ranking up that you're upgrading your bag space and your bank space. This does get expensive. Uh, you know, with in-game gold, the higher you kind of get into those rank ups, but you're going to need bag space. You're going to need bank space. Starting out, your bag's going to be full nonstop. You're going to be going to find merchants to sell stuff to. 
So make sure that, you know, you're upgrading your bag and bank space as much as possible. You know, I know it's going to cost a lot eventually, but those two things are, are two very important things in my opinion, along with this next thing. And as once you unlock a horse, uh, make sure that you're going to the stable day in and day out and either ranking up the speed, stamina, or bag space that is available in that horse. You can do that once per day. Now you may get some, you know, riding lessons, you know, that you can purchase or get them through, through the free rewards while you're ranking up. You can apply those to that horse as many times as you want, but you only can go to the stable and rank up your speed, stamina, or riding uh, capacity once per day. So make sure that you're doing that every day because that horse takes a long time to level up and to get it to max everything, to get it to 60 on each individual stat. So make sure once you get that horse, I think it's at level 10 or that mount, um, that you're leveling it up uh, every day at the stable. Depending on what edition you have of the game, is kind of getting back to talking about the base edition of the game. You're going to see some different things going on in the world. So if you bought, you know, if you just started out and you got the Graymoor edition, so you're starting out in Graymoor, there's going to be some open world events that are going on out there that might be a little bit difficult for you. I would recommend early on, that's why I said I think the base game is probably the best for new players because there's not a lot of things that are open world events that are going to hurt you. You may wander into some open world events in Greymoor or some of these other you know DLCs that are pretty difficult, things that you're not going to be able to beat by yourself uh, at a lower level. So make sure that you're sticking to the story to begin with, I, I would recommend. And if you find yourself in these situations, these open world events, if there's a lot of people around, you know, a lot of higher level players, you might want to hop in and just try it out. But if you find some of these things like world bosses, uh, you know, uh, some other things that go on, you, you're you probably going to be uh, kind of shocked when you get in there and these things can just absolutely do some massive damage. So, like I said, if you have the base game, that's probably one of the best things to me about the base games is really user-friendly for new players. Some of the uh, things that are in the open world and some of the, you know, different DLCs are a little bit more difficult. So just kind of keep that in mind. I would recommend not power leveling. A lot of people are going to power level. They'll hear about it. They have friends that tell them to do it. If it's your very first character, I would not recommend power leveling because you're going to have to go back and farm those skill points that you would have got from the story anyway. So, and you're going to miss out on a lot. So your very first char character, I would recommend doing it, you know, legitimately going through and doing all the story missions, that kind of thing. Uh, then, of course, you make other characters. You can power level those later on. And last but not least, find a guild. You can go in the guild finder. Uh, there's a lot of different guilds you can join. Some are going to be trading guilds, so keep that in mind. You don't want to join a trading guild early on when you first start out because a lot of those require payments. But you want to find a guild that's friendly, helpful, you know, something that says, you know, new players welcome. That way you can get some tips, some help, uh, you know, kind of from guild members. So make sure you go into that guild finder and checking out some of the guilds that are available in game to join. Anyway, guys, I hope this helped you out. If you liked it, hit the like. If you hadn't subscribed yet, please do so, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace.